BAM15 might be the closest thing we have to a holy grail fat burner. No jitters, no hunger suppression, no stimulant side effects, just pure mitochondrial uncoupling working quietly in the background. For those who love food or hate stimulants, it's in a league of its own, but unlike semaglutide or even tesafensine, it's still firmly in the experimental camp. No human trials yet, so long-term safety is unknown. It's a promising tool, but not without calculated risk. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of BAM15, and then, as an exception, I'm gonna share one of my client results. I don't normally do this on this channel, it's about my own personal journey, but for me, BAM15 isn't really applicable with my low body fat. Normally, mitochondria use the proton gradient across the inner membrane to generate ATP, and BAM15, it shuttles these proteins back across without generating ATP. So what that means is less uh, efficient mitochondria, and that generates more heat, so more energy expenditure. Think of a good analogy as driving your car, and if you leave the handbrake on, it's less efficient, but you're using more energy to drive along. So BAM15 increases beta oxidation, i.e. fat burning. This is to meet ATP demand. And when ATP is low, it activates AMPK, your body's energy sensor. So not only does it increase fatty acid oxidation, but also glucose uptake, mitochondrial biogenesis, the creation of new mitochondria, as well as autophagy, your cellular house clearing. There's even evidence that there's less reactive oxygen species generation by the mitochondria, as the inner membrane just has less potential, but but paradoxically, you need more nutrients. So before I get onto some uh, like things to watch out for with taking BAM15, let's just uh, cover the mice study back in 2020, where they gave it over 45 days, and the mice lost a staggering 27% of their body weight. On top of that, it seemed to have some epigenetic biological age reversal in these mice by just making them more metabolically healthy, less fat around the liver, and um, leading on to my client that's used a 37 year old female, she's happy for me to share her results, but she started with it and she was in stone, she was 10, pound, 10 stone 11, and then she's been on many different kinds of jabs. She's done a, a Manjaro, otherwise known as Tezepatide, she's done Retrotrutide, and semaglutide, otherwise known as azempic. And that's the most recent one she's been on is the semaglutide. It's the cheapest out of the three. She's very shrewd with her money. And she's had side effects, particularly with Manjaro and semaglutide and then retrotrutide. It's just a bit on the expensive side. So she's trying different things. Semaglutide, she dropped that body weight 15 pounds exactly. So what's that around exactly seven kilos around that mark? using semaglutide and normally what happens is she uh, any of these skinny jabs she does the they she will put the weight back on it just gradually starts coming back on because her appetite just goes up she's someone who does love food but since coming off semaglutide her appetite has come back but she's continued to lose the weight like three pounds over four weeks which you might say is not that much but she lost like 15 pounds leading up to that point and she's been eating a lot more food just living life how she wants to just having that the food you know not having to be too strict with calories and just getting that love back for food check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized there's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change so i'll be sure to do more content on ban 15 especially when she finishes that 60 day cycle like i say i don't give advice on anything out side of supplements I just give general information and on that topic you know like with her she has noticed some fatigue interestingly and things like magnesium obviously that's required for supporting mitochondria as it's essential for ATP activation and then deficiency obviously leads to muscle fatigue and cramps and this is something she's actually noticed she didn't take my advice as a gospel and uh, took a while to order magnesium on top of this doing a decent dose of it and she was noticing fatigue. So I guess that's a sign that uh, the uh, BAM15 is working. If you do notice some fatigue, obviously your mitochondria are less efficient. And uh, another one is coenzyme Q10. That's critical in the electron transport chain. Another important one is L-carnitine that transports long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria, obviously fueling them. And then you've got vitamins B1, B2, B3 in particular, and B5. So these act as coenzymes for mitochondrial enzymes like pyruvate dehydrogenase, as well as alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase as well. And if you don't know, they're in the Krebs cycle, otherwise known as the citric acid cycle. 
And you can actually test your level of alpha ketoglutarate with the True Health test. Another one, an easy one to test, is uh, if you've got low iron, i.e., so if uh, low ferritin that uh, shows uh, poor mitochondrial support. As it's essential for cytochromes in the electron transport chain, so low ferritin equals low mitochondrial output. And if you're putting the handbrake on your mitochondria, that's not ideal. And back on that subject of uh, antioxidants, you've got alpha lipoic acid. So again, that uh, can support those mitochondrial dehydrogenases, as well as recycling other antioxidants, therefore supporting redox balance. And another helpful supplement when on BAM15 is taurine, a very cheap supplement. And that can help with uh, the integrity of the mitochondrial membrane, calcium handling, as well as bile flow. So that can help with fat metabolism, which is especially helpful when uncoupling mitochondria. And you've got to remember, mitochondrial uncoupling is not linear, so on to dosing. So doing even 15 milligrams, as my client has done, has uh, you know kick-started her fat loss even after increasing her calorie intake. And so if you were to double that, I believe that that's, you don't get, it's not a linear uh, benefit you get. The side effects go up, heat production, and um, they're back onto those mice studies. They interestingly noticed with male mice, because uh, obviously in mice studies, they tend to go high with the dose and they actually noticed lower sperm production. So, and I believe that's down to increased body heat. It's worth noting, at least in the short to midterm, there was no liver or kidney toxicity. Though at very high doses, reduced activity was seen, so indicating fatigue. But the most important thing is no hypothermia which unlike earlier uncouplers like DMP, it makes it a major safety advantage with BAM15. And you've got to remember there are different levels of experimental, for example, the peptide epitalon, that's been around for over 20 years. People take it for activating telomerase, you know, increasing telomere length, melatonin production. And yeah, people, 20 years of anecdotal reports, there's even human studies with it. 5-amino-1-MQ, it's an NMMT inhibitor, so that can support uh, uh, like fat loss and uh, NAD and the NAD salvage pathway. And people have been using that anecdotally for around up to eight years now. So there's a moderate amount of use. Epitalon, there's a lot of anecdotal reports. And so uh, Epitalon, I'd say the risk profile is low. Um, five amino one MQ. It's more moderate. There is definitely a lot of uh, use over this last eight years, but nowhere near as much as epitalon. And then when you move on to BAM fifteen, this is definitely leaning towards more experimental. It's not even been five years yet that I've seen reports of people using it. So it doesn't mean it's unsafe. It just means there's a lot of unknowns there. And then that's where being moderate with the dose, looking at the risk to reward profile. If you are overweight then uh, that, that risk of being overweight can outweigh the potential risks of it. You know, if we're just looking at mice models, it seems promising, but there's still a lot of risk there because, um, you know, if there hasn't been a lot of mice studies and, uh, and there's not uh, that many anecdotal reports, that's what I'm basing on as well, then that's where the risk profile increases. And that's why I'm cautious with BAM15, especially being on it for long term. So I think it's pragmatic to uh, say, be on it for 60 days and then have at least 60 days off just to uh, let your mitochondria normalize that uncoupling effect. So you don't get an adaptive response where the benefits are starting to wane. You're not burning as much fat, but the side effects are going up. But that said, I'm very hopeful with BAM15. I just wish there were more studies, both in animals and humans, and just more anecdotal reports. And if you do have any feedback with it, please do comment down below. I do like to uh, read everything. And when, when I do have time, I will respond. And uh, yeah, so it's, I think it's one of the most cost-effective solutions out there. You know, at uh, well, $90 with my discount code, and then if you get 60 days use out of it, I think that is good value for money. So if you like that video, then check out this one on that compound I mentioned earlier, 5-amino-1-MQ. So it boosts NAD by blocking that enzyme NMMT. And you can even measure your level now, so you can actually find out your response before even taking it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.